it is Thursday, and that means that I am on Twitter, and many of you sent in your questions with the hashtag KDFAQ, which was wonderful. It was so easy to find them and to sort through them and try to find ones that I think will um, answer a lot of your questions that maybe went unasked. So the first question that I'm going to answer today is kind of an interesting one, and I wanted to address this because I haven't heard of this happening before, and if others of you are have had this happen, please let me know, because I will look into it in further detail. And that question is, an eating disorder residential center wouldn't accept me because my eating disorder is a result of depression and anxiety, not the cause of it. So the depression and anxiety came first, then the eating disorder, versus the eating disorder being the, the primary thing that happened. Hope that makes sense. That was, that's why I was making that clear. It seemed like they were saying I wasn't sick enough and the wrong kind, even though I'm diagnosed as a bulimic. I have never heard of this. And to be truthful, the only thing that has to happen in order for us to actually get treatment is to have a diagnosis of an eating disorder. Doesn't matter which came first. Doesn't matter what order anything came in, even if you have a bunch of other diagnoses, not just depression and anxiety. We've had clients who have schizophrenia, who have bipolar disorder. It doesn't matter. So I would go to another center. I know your eating disorder is going crazy over this and using it against you, but tell it to shut up because you deserve to get help. And we all know our eating disorders serve different purposes. For some of us, it may have come first. For some of us, it may have been like the 12th thing down the line, right? And we all deserve to get help and treatment centers will help you. That one's very bizarre. Um, so yeah, maybe let me know what one it was so that I can, you know, look into them, talk to them. Okay. Now the second one, number two is why have I been experiencing more flashbacks since I told my therapist about my abuse? Unfortunately, this is very common. That's why I referred all of you to the Courage to Heal workbook, that yellow um, or white, depending on what, I guess, when it was made. There's a couple different years of it. But the Courage to Heal workbook talks a lot about this because the reason that uh, past abuse is so hard is because we haven't talked about it. We stuff it for so long, right? We Oh, I don't want to deal with it, I don't want to deal with it. And then when we finally start talking about it, all those memories that we've been stuffing are like, blah, all over. And it's really overwhelming. And the flashbacks will be more constant. Our anxiety will go through the roof. If we are self-harmers, our self-harm might get worse. If we have an eating disorder, our eating disorder might get worse. Um, because when we finally start bringing it up, it's like we're opening that can of worms that we've been trying to keep shut. And I know it's hard. And this is the time when we may want to see our therapist twice a week. We may want to make plans with friends. We may want to hop online at my katiemorton.com and get extra support when it's late at night and the flashbacks are overwhelming and we can't sleep. But um, know that that's very normal and we just have to fight back. And please pick up that book, The Courage Till Workbook. For any of you who are past abuse sufferers or abuse survivors, um, it's a great tool and it gives you a lot of useful things you can use um, during your walk through it, okay? And share, if the other of you have other books that have helped, if you've been through the same kind of situation, share your um, your ideas and your tips and things that help so that we can work together, right? Okay, now this um, number three, the third question is, what do I do when people belittle me or treat me differently because of my issues? Now, I know this particular person is talking about, I believe it's like a cheer or a dance coach and they know about, um, her eating disorder, so now they're treating her differently. To be honest, if you have any way to not be around those people, I would not be around those people. Because that's just like one of the first videos I did, toxic friends, toxic people. Those are toxic people. Be they're Instead of talking to you or trying to figure out how they can help, they're treating you differently. Ah, I hate the thought of that. It makes me upset. But... If that's not an if that's not an option, you have to be around them. They're they're a teacher. They're in this case, you know, a coach of sorts. I would please, please, please fight through the anxiety. Start journaling about it. Start writing letters to them that maybe you don't send or you don't give to them, in preparation to potentially either talk to them and talk about it, or start seeing a therapist and start working through it and come to together. Um, to an agreement of what you're going to say and talk to them. Maybe write one of the letters after you've proofed it and changed it and worked it around. Maybe you just give it to them 
one day because this is part of the reason why I'm doing these videos is because people can't, tr it, it's, it's not right for people to treat us differently because of struggles that we have and we have to speak up for ourselves. Not a, you know, we don't have somebody else's doing it for us. So sometimes we have to really um, fight the anxiety, fight the, any kind of nervousness that we have about it and speak up for ourselves, right? We can fight this, we can win and you deserve to be treated the same way anybody else is. That is so frustrating. I'm so sorry that's happening. So please start journaling about it so you're venting that out so that you don't feel like you're just stuffing it in. Um, and hopefully soon you feel like you can either talk to your coach about it or um, give her or him a letter, okay? Now the last question, and this is actually a really great question as well, and I wondered if this was something that a lot of you had thought about but were afraid to ask. And this question says, I'm obese. I can't get in the mood to exercise, and I know that I, sh I have to do it, but I just never feel like it. Any tips? Now, I don't want this to be a, an answer where people are eating disorders like, oh, she's gonna give us tips on how to exercise more, because that's not what's gonna happen. What I would encourage you to do, if you struggle to be active in general, you lack motivation and you know that it's better for your body, keyword being it's better for your body and your dietitian says it's okay and your doctor says it's okay and your whole treatment team is like, yeah, go, work out. I would start trying to find things that are fun for you. So if dribbling a soccer ball as you you know, go around walking in the field or on the sidewalk, preferably not the sidewalk because a ball can roll out to the street and I don't want any of you doing that, but find a park where you can maybe dribble the ball around a little bit. All we need is 30 minutes. There's no need to like break into an intense sweat, get exhausted, there's no need for that. So maybe dribbling a ball helps you do more exercise than you would normally feel motivated to do. Having a friend hold you accountable, that can really help. If you wanna take a class like Zumba or maybe you like step aerobics or maybe you like yoga or swimming or whatever it is. If you have a friend that's gonna be there and it's gonna show up, you're less likely to bail and to flake out at the last minute. And another thing is trying something different. Try something new. I know that my sister-in-law has been doing Zumba because she was getting tired of her little step aerobics class and then she's really been enjoying it and then she met new friends in her Zumba class. And so I would just encourage you to try something different. And I know the motivation factor is really hard to actually get up and out the door and that's why having someone who's holding you accountable is good. Or if you have a dog in the house, always say, I will walk, it'll be my chore to always walk him or her. And that gives you, you know, 10 minutes three times a day or so, which is... 30 minutes and you did it. So those are my tips and tricks and things that help me um, keep active and do things that are good for my body. And I hope that you all enjoyed those answers. I will be back tomorrow and I'll be on Facebook. Like I said about um, last week about Facebook, the easiest thing is to either on my homepage, ask a question, again, using the hashtag KDFAQ, or if you're gonna message me in the first two or three lines, put your question in because sometimes the uh, messages are so long it's hard for me to get through it and figure out what the exact question is so that will really help speed that up. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you tomorrow. Bye!